Imagine a world where Nintendo's cinematic dreams stretch far beyond the Super Mario Bros. movie. In this video, we'll delve into Miyamoto's grand vision for Nintendo's cinematic conquest. Nonsense, you say? Well, gaze into our crystal ball to see the future of Nintendo in the movie industry with this video. Are you ready? And action! For almost two decades, Nintendo steered clear of movie adaptations, focusing primarily on what they know best, video games, which some fans believed was for the better. It wasn't until recently, in 2019, with Pokemon Detective Pikachu, that Nintendo re-emerged in cinemas once again. Nintendo's first movie, Super Mario Bros., came out in 1993. It got butchered all right, and Nintendo quickly became a laughingstock in the movie industry. Now finally, 20 years later, in April 2023, the highly anticipated The Super Mario Bros. movie arrives on the big screen. Animated this time, and we couldn't be more excited about it. Please don't suck. But wait, why did Nintendo now suddenly decide to do these movie adaptations? Think about it, isn't it kind of suspicious? The recent push for Nintendo to expand its franchises into the cinematic realm may have a deeper purpose than simply just fan service. Shigeru Miyamoto, head of Nintendo's software planning and development division, mentioned in an interview with Fortune that the company received a lot of offers for film adaptations of their games. Considering how much Nintendo has influenced the video game world and popular culture in general, it comes as no surprise. But Miyamoto has been very vague about Nintendo's plans for future movies. We all know there's something brewing back there in the Nintendo kitchen. So what exactly is Miyamoto cooking? Stay tuned and you'll be surprised. Probably familiar with his work and a lot of what makes a video game great. A short recap about Shigeru Miyamoto. He's a Japanese video game designer, producer, and game director for Nintendo and is one of the most influential designers in the history of video games. He joined the company in 1977, when it was still a relatively small business that sold playing cards and other novelties. He was hired as an apprentice in the planning department, and from there, providing invaluable designs to Nintendo, Miyamoto's career skyrocketed. He helped create the art for the arcade game Sheriff, and later created some of Nintendo's most well-known franchises, such as Donkey Kong, Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, and Star Fox, just to name a few. And since then, Miyamoto has worked on over 92 games, not only as a designer, but also as a producer and director on many of them. He's always had a unique perspective on things, which separates him from other game developers. He doesn't follow trends or do something that he doesn't truly believe in. Instead, he designs games that are easy and fun for anyone to play. For him, the most important part of the game is having a sense of accomplishment and helping gamers understand what they're supposed to do with level design. He always tries to make the players feel like a part of the game, and ultimately, that's what led Nintendo's booming success in the video game scene. His innate abilities and unique ways of thinking have always been valuable for Nintendo. Everything from The Legend of Zelda on the original Nintendo, Super Mario 64, to Star Fox Zero, even though that is a discussion for another day. Shigeru Miyamoto has always shown range and innovation with almost every game he's involved with. Thanks to Shigeru Miyamoto, Nintendo has stayed mostly on top of the gaming scene. There are no games that feel like Nintendo's, hence the always high prices on their games. Gotta love it. But now, Nintendo aims to expand their scope. In a constantly changing world, entertainment companies like Nintendo need to find new ways to reach larger audiences and maintain their relevancy, particularly as smartphones have introduced new challenges ever since their debut. In an interview with Fortune, Miyamoto expressed Nintendo's future plans. As we look more broadly at what is Nintendo's role as an entertainment company, we're starting to think more and more about how movies can fit in with that, and we'll potentially be looking at things like movies in the future. So it's clear to us that Nintendo is planning on dipping its toes into films and other media projects to expand its reach. Of course, this won't come without some difficulties. After the failure that was the Super Mario Bros. movie back in 1993, 
Nintendo was really hesitant with lending away the rights to their IPs in order to make more movies. Why, you may ask? It's because they wanted full creative control, fearing that their reputation would be tarnished on the big screen if someone else had creative control much like what happened with the 1993 movie. Also, we covered this movie in a separate video, make sure to watch it afterward. So for some, this exclusivity could be a good thing. If Nintendo is fully involved in the making of movie adaptations, then surely it'll be a good movie, right? Sadly, this is a double-edged sword. Involving Nintendo in the filmmaking process is certainly beneficial, but it also raises the stakes to make sure the movies live up to fans' high expectations, since Nintendo would be held solely accountable if the movies failed. Making movie adaptations based on video games isn't easy. You're probably wondering why most of these movies always fail. Well, for starters, video games and movies have different storytelling structures. The story does not progress and develops the same way in these two mediums. Even Miyamoto knew this. Again, in Fortune, he said the following quote, Making movie adaptations based on video games isn't easy. You're probably wondering why most of these movies always fail. Well, for starters, video games and movies have different storytelling structures. The story does not progress and develop the same way in these two mediums. Because games and movies seem like similar mediums, people's natural expectation is we want to take our games and turn them into movies. I've always felt video games, being an interactive medium, and movies, being a passive medium, mean the two are quite different. A movie needs a good story. It needs to have depth and complexity, while also being entertaining. And while there are some video games with deep and meaningful storylines, that isn't always the case. Most games focus on providing hours of entertainment with their gameplay and level design. Another reason why video game movies are hard to make is that in most games, the players are in control. They're free to control the characters as they please, move them around, interact with other objects and people, and so on. Movies, on the other hand, are completely backseated. Viewers are just witnessing what is happening without having a say in any of it. So here lies most of the problems when adapting video games to movies. And many filmmakers don't realize this until it's too late. So what does Nintendo need to do in order to successfully make movie adaptations of their games? Crack the storytelling issue and keep the audience involved, pretty much. It took over two decades for Nintendo to return to the big screen. And since then, they've kept tight control over which projects are developed and how. From what we've seen so far, they're managing the challenges as well as one can expect. They started slowly, allowing some of their characters to appear as cameos in 2012's Wreck-It Ralph and 2015's Pixels before moving on to bigger projects like Pokemon Detective Pikachu. After some success with the live-action Pokemon movie, the Super Mario Bros. movie is the next big step on Nintendo's roadmap. With Nintendo's commitment to maintaining control over their IPs, it makes sense for the gaming icon himself, Shigeru Miyamoto, to be involved. He's officially the producer for the 2023 Super Mario Bros. movie, alongside Chris Melodondri. When the movie was first announced in 2018, some fans were hesitant and worried that the animated film could repeat the mistakes of the live-action movie. The casting of Chris Pratt as the voice of Mario did not help reassure fans either. It's a me, a Mario. In a Q&A published as part of Nintendo's latest financial results briefing, Miyamoto explained that Nintendo had been working on the movie for a long time because they wanted to reach more new audiences. However, he assured us that the new project would stay faithful to the memories of their game. He believes the animated movie does an excellent job of staying true to the franchise's roots while telling a new story that everyone can enjoy. Miyamoto's reassurances have helped ease the concern of some fans, but the film is running on very high stakes. What would happen if the movie flops? Will Nintendo again be hesitant to try their shot at movies as they did back in 1993? Miyamoto won't let this happen, as long as he's in charge.
We're confident with Miyamoto's innovative mind and creative vision, he will take Nintendo's movie endeavors to new heights. Aside from the animated Super Mario Bros. movie, Miyamoto has been involved in some other projects in recent times. From Pikmin short films to Super Nintendo World installations at Universal Studios Japan and Hollywood, Miyamoto has obviously a clear vision and good plan for where he wants to go with Nintendo endeavors. And while he hasn't revealed much, we can only guess what upcoming projects are coming next. But one thing is for sure, we can trust that Miyamoto has Nintendo's best interest in mind, as well as us, the fans. Just as he approaches video game design, keeping the gamer's experience in mind, he will approach these new projects and make sure they're fun on the big screen. The Super Mario Bros. movie is finally out and countless moviegoers will flock to theaters. We can only hope that it's a box office success and sheds a light on Nintendo's future plans in the cinematic universe. With Miyamoto's guidance, Nintendo's films and media endeavors are likely to be positive. So, what do you think? Is Nintendo's plan to expand into film and media a good move? Or should they focus exclusively on developing video games? Let us know in the comments, we'd love to hear your thoughts.